what is going on guys? It is your boy Cesar here with a video here today. It brings a brand new video I created your very own cool cityscape or landscape transition screen. So basically I'm taking what my intro is since I for the record, by the way, guys, I do have a video on my intro. I'll put it over here for you guys to actually learn how to do it. Of course, it's not the exact same intro as mine, but the actual premise. But also, you guys are going to pretty much learn the premise of the video or how to do that in this video, too. So, hopefully, guys, you will love it, enjoy it. But if you guys are looking to make a landscape video, that's something like this, right, by the way. Right, super simple, right? But I'm also going to do an example for this video here today using a cityscape, which I think is also pretty cool. And also, like, you can customize and make it look really dope as well. And that looks something like this. So either way, I think you're going to learn something really fun and really cool to use for like streams or videos, whatever. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy and uh, enjoy the video. That's it. All right, homie. So before we actually hop into After Effects, I want to quickly break down the silhouettes you'll need to create. For a landscape silhouette, you're pretty much going to simplify mountains and trees and make them solid colors. So if you don't have any experience in creating mountains from scratch, there is no hard feelings in Googling some mountains and ridge lines to place inside Photoshop and honestly just trace over them with a brush then making sure they're filled in as one solid shape, just so you can have a base. You can also think about adding in some objects like trees, most notably for landscapes, and pretty much spread them across the top of the ridgeline of your mountains to bring it to life. You can then take your first mountain shape and all the assets as well, and take them and group them all together. Then of course with the layer option, you can choose a color of your choice, but also make sure the actual color you guys are choosing is a very dark color, that way you can actually have a lighter set for the rest of the mountains that go behind it. Because what actually ends up happening is the next steps would be making an entirely separate group of mountains behind your first foreground silhouette. So pretty much these next sets of mountains get taller than the actual set that's in front of them. While each time the next set is created, the color is actually lighter than the one in front. You pretty much want to repeat this three times in total so you find exactly what you're looking for. And of course, not forgetting a really nice simple colored background to make it all final. So in total, you end up having pretty much four different layers, one being the foreground mountain, the second one being the mountain behind it, the third one being the other mountain behind the second one, and then your background color. This entire process is actually the same exact thing when doing cityscapes, but it's a little bit easier from scratch because all you have to do is really honestly focus on just doing some really random rectangles and just making some different roofs. Now, do not forget and keep this in mind, you want to make sure that each individual part of the scene, meaning each different ridgeline and or cityscape group, is its own PNG separately when exporting. So what I mean is you want to take your foreground group and isolate that and go to File, Save for Web, and make sure you guys are using PNG24 and save it in your documents. Then after all four of your layers, or if you have more of course, are saved as your PNGs, you can drop them in After Effects and you're ready to get going. All right, homie, so let's go ahead and get this thing going right here, right now. Of course, I already have my four PNGs that we actually created inside Photoshop, all separated in here in the project files, all good to go. Now, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna press where it says new composition here, and where it says 1920, 1080, we want those to be our heights and resolution, or heights and width, right? And our frame rate is at 60 frames per second, and our duration is at three seconds. If you want it to be shorter, we can always kind of fix it, but three seconds is a pretty good kind of like transition time, so any log on this might be a little bit awkward in my opinion. So I'm gonna press okay. Now, I'm gonna take the first PNG here, which is the sort of the front part of the actual scene, which is this picture for me right here. And then with this, I'm gonna take my timeline here, I'm gonna drop it to where it says around one second. This one zero zero frames is basically one second, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the PNG, press P on our keyboard for the position uh, setting to pop up. Then this little, this little stopwatch here, you can click on this and this will add a keyframe, which basically says, hey, add one second here, this picture will be at this position perfectly where you see it right now in the preview. So I can take this and go all the way down to zero seconds, okay? I'm gonna click on the image, click on it again, hold shift and drag it up. Or you can just go ahead and just take this uh, little number right here and just drag it all the way to the left just until your actual picture is completely outside the canvas. And I think we're almost there. I'm gonna click, go a little bit more out and right around here is perfect for me. It can be a little bit off, that's fine. But now it's completely outside the canvas. If I were to just press play, you'll see at zero seconds, uh, it's outside the canvas. And at one second, it's now in frame and perfectly for us to kind of get, uh, it's in frame perfectly. Perfect, right? Sure, okay. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna highlight these two keyframes here. I'm gonna drag this first one to where it says one second here. So of course, now it only starts uh, at one second when it starts coming inside. So at technically two seconds now, this is where it's gonna stand. So what we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna drag this around halfway just so I can see this picture so I can actually choose the color. Um, Cause what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click over here on this canvas, go to new where it says solid, and we're gonna click on this little eyedropper tool and we wanna select the same exact blue or whatever color these guys are using right now of this part right here, press okay, just like so. And now the solid is now appearing and this is what we need. So what I'm gonna do is that one second here, I'm gonna drag it to one second. We're gonna wanna keyframe the position of this solid, right? P on our keyboard, position it just like so. 
and I'm gonna go to where it says zero, and I'm gonna drag this, hold shift, and click it and bring it outside the canvas. Just like this. Perfect, it's kind of lining up now, right? So now at zero seconds, everything's outside the uh, frame. Then at one second here, the solid comes down, and what we wanna do is we wanna take the solid again at two seconds and bring it all the way outside the canvas toward the bottom, however. So take this, since the position's already keyframed, we can just take this and drag this, just so it's just like kind of hovering over this. Now if I kind of go to zero to two seconds here, you'll see that it kind of starts and all goes down all at once. And it's pretty much exactly what we need for it to kind of be like on a transition uh, effect, right? So if I kind of zoom in, press OK, right? It's kind of stagnant or whatever right now, but we can always fix that. But you can see this is exactly what we need here. And I think it's a little awkward right here, like right here. I don't know if that's because it's like actually transparent and off a little bit. If it is, we just want to go back to the second keyframe here and just probably drag this up a little bit more, just like so, and that way it's not there. Otherwise, it might be this little line right here that's kind of interrupting it, but regardless, this is good for us. So what we want to do now is I'm going to highlight these keyframes just like so. This keyframe here on the top as well. Boom. All the keyframes are now highlighted. I can just right-click on the keyframe, go to this keyframe assistance, and use Easy Ease or press F9 in the future for yourself. Press it just like so. Now, with this Easy Ease, we can click on this little graph editor here. Now with this graph editor, if your graph does not look like mine, you want to choose where it says edit speed graph for yourselves. And what we can do now is I'm going to highlight these two keyframes or all the keyframes on the bottom, right? I'm going to drag this in, drag this in a little bit as well, drag this in a little bit, drag this in a little bit as well. It's kind of all working the same way, but really all we're doing is kind of giving it a little bit more of a flow. So if I kind of press start now, right? You see it's a little bit more flow and it's not as stagnant, boringly moving down. It's kind of doing like a nice quick, and then slow, kind of slow down. A really nice flow to it, you can see, just like so, right? That is perfect. We can start off and say like, hey, we finished our first one. Now the other parts are gonna be super, super simple as well. So now for this next part, what we wanna do is we wanna take in our second PNG and put this right under our first one, just like this, right? So what we wanna really have this do is we don't want the second PNG to come in until the solid, let me bring this all the way down, by the way, right, all the way down until the solid here, this is when you wanna start seeing it. So make sure your second PNG is all the way on the bottom, um, even below the solid as well. So what we're gonna do is with this little PNG here, we wanna go ahead and say here, one second, I wanna click on this, press P. This is all the way, oops, not this one, sorry. The second PNG, click on it, all the way at the bottom. You can't see what I'm doing exactly, so I'm gonna just hide these really quick. But at one second here, right, P on our keyboard for the position, keyframe it, drag it all the way down outside the canvas. You don't really have to drag it all the way down, just as, as long as this uh, cityscape or landscape, whatever your uh, scape is, um, is not in frame, which is perfectly for me, that's, that's right, right, uh, right there. So with this now, I'm gonna go ahead, oh, before I do that though, let's also keyframe it at the two second mark and make sure we keyframe it at the, uh, this position here. So now that's saying, hey, at two frames, I don't even have to worry about ma making it perfect. I already made it so it's uh, perfect already. So I'm gonna go one second now. Then I can take this, drag this all the way down right about here. So now at zero seconds, let's bring this back in. Zero seconds, it comes down, boom, the solid's in here. And now the cityscape is also kind of like, you know, simultaneously bringing in and coming in almost like you're looking over a street or realistically it's just a, more of an effect at this point, more like a parallax effect at this point, but it looks really good just like that. So that's exactly what we need. Um, and it's super, super simple. All that's happening is the first one's coming down, the other one's coming down up, right? So, like that. Now, I'm gonna take these two keyframes here again, highlight them, press F9 on my keyboard for the easy ease, go to Graph Editor, highlight the two, bring this in a little bit, bring this in a little bit, and now we'll go back in here and just say, hey, what's happening? I think that's pretty good, just like so, right? You can kind of just hover over and kind of see if it matches. If you want it to come in a little bit slower, of course, you move the keyframe in. Right, so or faster, excuse me, move the keyframe in, right? So it stops pretty quick, and, and the front is actually the one that's actually still moving. You want it slower, you can move it out just like so, right? So it's this the front stops, but the, the one in the back is still going in. So it all depends on what you guys are looking for, but for me, I'm gonna keep it like this for now, and we will fix it later on. But what we can do now is we can just simply highlight these keyframes again, press control C on our keyboard to copy it, then drag in number three, just like so, all the way on the bottom. One second here again, put your timeline at one second. Now, if you click on the cityscape number three PNG, you can press control V on your keyboard. It'll take the exact same, uh, how do you say, keyframe and placements from the number two that we just did. So if I go through it really quickly, you'll see now the other PNG, which is this one right here, 
right, is also coming in. Let me zoom in a little bit because I don't know why I'm so far out, sorry. But um, you can see how the actual other one is now coming in as well. However, this is cool. I don't want them to come at the same exact time. So what I'm gonna do, to myself, I'm gonna say, hey, the one on the far, far back, which is actually this one. Now, if you can't see the keyframes, by the way, you can see that it is keyframe, but if you can't see the keyframes, you press U on your keyboard to show them, just like so. Now I can take this and be like, hey, I wanna drag this out a little bit, drag this out a little bit. So now it's kind of like stepping, right? So if you'll see, it'll come in, and now it looks really good. Oh, hell yeah, that's perfect. Okay, sweet. All right, so last but not least, I'm gonna drag in my background here, all the way at the bottom once again. And this background, we basically don't want it to be seen until the one second mark, so I'm gonna take this, drag this over here, just like so, kind of shrink it, right? So that the way the background is not in the way. Um, oop, Cityscape number three, what's happening here? Oh, okay, so Cityscape number three, you can remember before the position, I didn't drag it all the way out, like the entire frame, I only dragged it out for number two to be outside of the frame, right? So what I want to make sure I do is number three here, I'm gonna drag this a little bit further down, just enough so that nothing is being seen. So you can see it was being seen before here. Make sure you just drag it down a little bit more. Right now you can't see it, right? So zero, it's going through, boom, the solid comes down. Now the whole time thing comes down. And now since the PNG, uh, the back on PNG is also there now, starting at one second, this will come in, looks really good. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So I can kind of play it myself again and yeah. This is pretty, oh, I can see a little mistake here. You can see a little thing right here still poking out. That's the that's the third PNG. I'm gonna drag this a little, even more further down, basically outside the canvas. Now there's nothing showing. Now we're good. Boom, comes down. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, if you guys want the first start, this like sort of like screen coming down to go faster, all you have to do now is really just take the first PNGs or excuse me, the first keyframes here and drag them in. Basically, of course, then of course I have to move this as well. So we can make this whole entire thing, a whole entire sequence faster. So I can make this really fast and then it can come down like this. I can go even bring these over here. I can even bring these inward, all the last keyframes inward, make the entire thing faster. But I would actually say, I think two seconds is a pretty good spot to be, even a little bit later, right? It's like, boom, boom. And then it will just kind of zoom in and come out afterwards. Perfect. I think that's, I think two seconds is actually a pretty solid start. Um, you can, of course, switch it to how you want it. But one thing I do want to actually have you guys do is if you guys do not have this mode here selected, um, you want to actually click on this till you see these three little things right here, right? You see the switch toggle mode. If yours looks like this, you want it to look like this by clicking this little right here, this little kind of like bar here. Click on that. So we want to do highlight all these things. Click on this one first one right here. This is the motion tab, the motion blur tab. That'll basically apply it to all of the layers. Then you wanna make sure this is enabled if it wasn't already. Click on it just like so. Now what it actually ends up doing for yourself is giving you a nice little motion blur, um, which will look really good when we actually do another thing as well. Um, but for now, that's pretty good. We wanna have those all selected. What we wanna do really quickly is we wanna highlight all of these, right click on it, and then pre-comp it just like so by pressing pre-composition. We'll just call this city, whatever, press okay. Now basically what a pre-comp is, if I just double click on this, everything that we just did before is still in this composition. But in pre-comp one, it's basically saying this entire one layer is just basically one layer, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just go through it, right? Boom. <clears throat> so I'm gonna let this last right about two seconds where it just kind of stops right here, right? Look at that, that's really nice. Um, right around here is where it kind of stops, everything pauses. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, S on my keyboard for scale, click on the keyframe, press P on my keyboard for position, press my keyframe, and then click on the Cityscape uh, composition and then press U on my keyboard twice to bring up all the keyframes, just like so. Now I can see every, like two things I just put in, I can see them all. Now, what I'm gonna do is basically just say, hey, right around here, I'm gonna go up maybe, maybe about 10 frames or so, whatever you can, you can see what I'm doing here, right? Take the scale, and just basically zoom in all the way, take the position. I wanna basically zoom into the sky. So I'm gonna take this, basically zoom it in all the way while also make, moving the position to also make sure I'm only looking at the sky at the end of the, at end of the frame, right around here. So basically what it's saying here is boom, once it's done, it's just gonna zoom in really quickly. I can even drag these out to make it a little more uh, slower. It'll zoom in really quickly. It's like boom, stops. Maybe I can just take this all the way to the end, like right around here. So it kind of pauses for a little second and then zooms in. Perfect. So pause for a little second, then I'll zoom in just like so. This is exactly what I kind of want. So what I do here is right when it gets around here, basically in between these two keyframes, I'm gonna click on the city once again. Oops. I'm gonna click on this once again, just like so. Press T on my keyboard for opacity. 
We're going to click on this keyframe here at 100%, right? That's what this 100% is, is basically saying here, the opacity is at 100% at this location on this keyframe, excuse me. And then what I can do is right when I press U, by the way, again, to bring all the keyframes, go to your end of the keyframes right here, take the opacity, just take this all the way down to zero. So now what's going to happen is once it gets to this little keyframe here, it'll start zooming in. Then once it gets to this keyframe here, it'll start lowering the opacity and it'll kind of just fade in and it kind of looks like this. Boom, boom. Yep, I like this. You can even, if you want to, even probably put the motion blur on this as well. Might be a little bit overkill, but overall, so I, oh, it looks really good at the end with the motion blur. So I'd probably say put both the actual compositions, even highlighting all these, putting motion blur here, putting the motion blur on this one as well, will probably be good for you. So you can see how literally, it looks really good. I'm excited because I know you guys are gonna super like, like super, super love this. Um, Yeah, I'm a fan. But of course, if you want things to be faster, you just basically move your keyframes in, etc. But let me actually show you really, really quickly how to actually render this out. What you wanna do is you wanna go to composition and where it says add to re uh, render queue, control M, or excuse me, control M also can uh, bring up the render queue as well. But click on that. We wanna have our loss list here. We wanna keep it on AVI format. Um, you could probably use a WebM format if you guys used export to media encoder for like your stream stuff. But if you're using it for a video, you can use AVI channel. You wanna make sure it's RGB plus, uh, RGB plus alpha. Right, and I just wanna make sure the output here, the audio, since we don't have audio, unless you do wanna put audio, but if you don't have audio, just turn this off so you don't have any troubles in OBS or anything like that, um, or your videos, and you just press okay. You of course choose your output to where you wanna put it at, and then you press render, and you guys got yourselves a super dope, solid looking cityscape, landscape, little transition. And it's super easy, it honestly is just incredible to what you can honestly do with it. It's, look at mine, right? You can do a lot if you just have three different layers, right? The foreground layer, the background layer, and the other layer that's behind that background layer, right? Um, you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make it super themed to what your stream is, or uh, maybe make a theme based on your transition. It can be kind of fun. Um, look up like 2D uh, silhouette landscapes or 2D silhouette cityscapes, and you can find some really cool inspiration there as well. But um, other than that, guys, that is the end of the video here today. And I hope you guys learned something. hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, if, you're also, if you're also looking how to make my intro, this is exactly how I did it, but also with one little thing, which is like the logo fly in. But I do have a video of that. You want to watch it. It's like right over there. I'll put like a, a little like a, what do you call it? The pop-up thing. But uh, yeah, this is my first video back. It's been like six weeks since I did another video. Um, besides the fact that, of course, I have them all pre-recorded, but yeah, I tried my best. And I hopefully you guys liked it and hope you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully I wasn't too quick and whatever. But yeah, that's it. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Since HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking predator, guys. Later, much love, peace, and enjoy your weekend.